so let us continue with my last class uh, we were uh, discussing about the economic importance of fungi so today we are going to um, study a little more about the economic importance so in our last class we had studied about the decomposers role of fungi in decomposition of pectin lignin cellulose deterioration of wood and uh, uh, also we studied the spoilage of paper textiles leathers uh, the bio deterioration or the fungal deterioration of various other uh, uh, equipments uh, also we studied about the spoilage of food uh, spoilage of the um, the canned food and also the mycotoxins they produce the mushroom toxin toxic mushrooms we studied the uh, diseases caused by these particular fungi on plants we studied little with ex with little examples and also we studied some of the examples of uh, the fungi which cause diseases even in case of human uh, starting from the different kinds of infection cutaneous subcutaneous superficial systemic infection and opportunistic infection the different uh, fungi the different group of fungi which cause this kind of infection students kindly note some of the examples like uh, trichosporon species uh, some of the few important example trichosporon microsporum species and uh, so for example histoplasma blastomyces cryptococcus candida aspergillus these are some of the dominant group of uh, organism which causes infection uh, in case of human we also studied little about the entomophilic uh, fungi uh, we started with the study of uh, the the useful aspect of this particular fungi in various industries so last class we studied this where the fungi they apart from their harmful effect they also have some beneficial effects also where we studied their application of this particular fungi in various industries starting from beverage industries with the production with respect to the production of alcohol some of the very best examples of the alcohol producing organisms or uh, as we all know saccharomyces species and the organic acids some of the fungi are involved in the production of organic acid we studied starting from citric acid ditaconic acid fumaric acid malic acid and cojoric acid kindly note down the examples of these organism which has an ability of producing these kind of organic acids we also studied the role of this particular fungi in the production of uh, uh, antibiotics and vitamin b12 fatty acids and also we is studied about the statins which it produced starting from mevastatin lovastatin as i was mentioning there are certain fungi which has an ability of lowering the cholesterol lowering the cholesterol by uh, blocking the pathway of the cholesterol synthesis so that <clears throat> that we had studied so some of the very good example of lower statin producing organism as i had mentioned apart from there are certain aspergillus species also there are some monoascus species which are extensively used in the production of this lower statin and also uh, i was mentioning the research which happened in our laboratory also with respect to certain mushrooms which are also involved which has an ability of producing this lower statin likewise we have many other uh, uh, pharmaceutical applications say for example cyphosporin erotin uh, trichothecin and also i was mentioning this is for of an Uh, substance or the compound which is produced by trichoderma roseum which is one of a uh, antifungal uh, agent so likewise lords uh, lords and also there are certain mushrooms which i would like to tell over here so for example there are certain ganoderma species ganoderma species it's one of a highly medicinal mushroom medicinal mushroom which has even anti viral activity still lots of research can happen in this particular field exploiting this particular fungi especially the exploiting the basidiomycetes fungi in that also some of the mushrooms say for example aphidophorales which has an ability still very less little research has happened in this particular field lots of research still uh, it can happen the students you can focus in these areas also so and also uh, apart from their application in producing various organic acid alcohol or in uh, uh, pharmaceutical industries these fungi are extensively used in the production of various enzyme amylase amylase as we all know this is one of an enzyme which has an ability of 
breaking down the starch into the simpler form. Hence, this particular organism, especially the Aspergillus niger, is very good example for the amylase producer. So likewise, we have cellulase enzyme produced. Many, many group of organism has an ability of producing this cellulase. Cellulase is an enzyme which has an ability of breaking down the cellulose into the simpler unit. One of a very good example is trichoderma species. Apart from trichoderma, even this Aspergillus penicillium species also has an ability of producing this cellulase. And protease enzyme, what are these protease enzyme, which has an ability of breaking down the protein into the simpler form. So where we have rhizopus species in this, rhizopus is there, aspergillus species, aspergillus sorizae, where this protease has been extensively used in the production, uh, in the production of cheese making, meat industries, leather industries for the breaking down of this protein. Lipase enzyme, which has an ability of breaking down the lipid components, uh, rhizopus, Orize is very good example for this lipase producer, uh, where it has been extensively used in vegetable oil processing industries. Likewise, even in my last class, I was discussing something about Rinet. Rinet is one of a enzyme which is usually extensively found in the rodent. In the elementary canal of this rodent, we can find them. Uh, and also, there are certain fungi which, for example, muca belly, it has an ability of producing this rennet. This rennet has been extensively used in the cheese making industries, especially in cheese manufacturing. This, is, this rennet is a substance which has an ability of breaking down the uh, the casein. Casein is an important substance which is present in the milk, isn't it? This casein has been broken down into the simpler form. That is, the curdling happened uh, uh, by the by this particular enzyme called as rennet, where in industries, muca species has been extensively used. Likewise, we have pectinase, the enzyme which has an ability of breaking down the pectin into the simpler form, especially in the soft drink industries, is because uh, the, the fruits, especially the fruits, especially uh, the, the pectin component is, is being found higher. So for the breaking down of this pectin, so they are using Aspergillus niger and where uh, this, and even there are certain fusarium also has an ability of producing this pectinase enzyme, but the problem is fusarium produces certain mycotoxins. So uh, uh, the industrially, the Aspergillus niger application is more. So likewise, we have invertase, xylenase, etc. These are the enzymes which has, apart from this enzyme, there are many other uh, enzymes where the fungi has an ability of producing. Still, again, the lots of uh, lots of research should happen in this particular field uh, for applying this particular fungi industrially. So, so now let us study about the application or the use of this particular fungi in food industries. So we studied the, uh, the useful aspect of this particular fungi uh, in industries. Now let us study how actually this fungi can be used as food. Uh, as we all know, for the process of fermentation, you know, you know, I need not have to tell what is fermentation and all. So for the process of fermentation, especially for the production of this uh, idli, dosa, batter and all, you know, we will keep that batter for the process of fermentation so that, so why the fermentation should happen? Because why the fermentation should happen? So that the idli or the dosa, the softening happen. Even in uh, case of bakery, bakery industries for the production or the for the manufacturing of uh, uh, bread, cakes and all, they use the saccharomyces species. Why they use? They are involved in the process of the fermentation. During the process of fermentation, carbon dioxide is released. Due to the production of this carbon dioxide, once they start to escape, what happened? The softening of this particular uh, bread or uh, cakes, likewise, even our dosa batter or idli batter, the soft uh, your idli or dosa will become soft only when the batter is been properly fermented. That you would have experienced. So, likewise, even for the for this idli dosa batter production, for the process of this fermentation. 
various uh, kind of yeast unicellular or fungi have been used. Some of them are uh, Torulopsis species, uh, Torulopsis species, Trichosporum species. Saccharomyces is one of a very good example of this uh, uh, in application. Likewise, even jalebis, you know, you would have, you would have uh, eaten this jalebis also. That also, uh, been fermentation of the batter, I mean, if you people know how actually this jalebis has been prepared, even like our idli or dosa batter also, this particular batter has to be fermented. So for uh, the batter fermentation, for the production of this particular batter, fermented batter, they are going to use uh, yeast species, yeast that is Saccharomyces bionis. Kindly students, all of you should make a note of all these examples, what I'm telling. Okay, so likewise, you know about the kanji. In Tamil, it is called as kanji. Kannada, we call it as ganji. I think you would have seen, uh, uh, when, uh, especially in Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Orissa region and all. Uh, in Karnataka, uh, Mangalore, uh, those region, I, uh, I'm not sure in uh, in this uh, um, Mysore or in uh, in Bangalore region, how much they are going to use. So what they will do is night itself, this rice, whatever uh, they will allow it for fermentation rice, they will add some amount of water and they will leave it for fermentation. Next day, they are going to use that part for a particular thing as ganji. So, uh, for that particular uh, ganji preparation, one of a very good uh, organism which can be used is uh, Hansenula amono uh, anomala species. This is one of a fungi, yeast-like organism, even this is like an yeast-like organism, which gives uh, when the fermentation and the flavor of that particular ganji improves. If that particular, this particular organism has been used. However, in household, they may not inoculate any such organism. Just they will allow this rice along with water to just to ferment and morning. It, they tell that it is very good for health, maybe uh, due to the secondary metabolites produced by this particular organism. Maybe the, uh, that might be the reason. Likewise, likewise we have one more uh, uh, starter, traditional starter uh, called as uh, morcha. Morcha. Uh, this is one of a traditional starter, which is commonly uh, used in uh, Darjeeling hills in Sikkim uh, region in India, where they are uh, fermenting some uh, starchy substances. Say, for example, they may use this potatoes or uh, uh, tapioca, you know, in Kannada, we call it as uh, ginsu. So any such uh, uh, vegetables or whatever it is, if they are rich in starch, they are used, they are using that for the preparation of uh, the starter. So such starchy, uh, starchy substrate, uh, they are allowing it to uh, ferment using again uh, the organism called as Hansinula anomala species or even Mucor uh, roxians and even Rhizopus harius, harisans. These are some of the species which are uh, extensively used in fermenting the starch substrate. So the, uh, the sub after the process of fermentation, the sweet sour uh, product, whatever they get, they are having little amount of alcohol. Hence, they, I mean, this particular uh, uh, thing, they are using it as a traditional starter in, uh, in uh, Darjeeling Hills and Sikkim. So this particular uh, uh, drink is called as morcha. So which is being prepared using certain star star starchy substance. Even it could be a rice or which whatever the substrate, whichever the uh, the crop or a vegetable made up of starch that they are going to use, allowing it for ferment and the product, whatever they are going to get, that they are going to use it as a drink that was called as morcha in that particular region. The organism kindly note down Hansinula anomala species, anomala muca roxianus species and rhizopus Harryisms. These are some of the organisms which has been extensively used for the production of that particular drink. And also, you would have, uh, uh, you may know about uh, toady. Uh, toady. Can anybody know what is this toady? Toady. Have you heard about this toady? Anyone? Uh, Ma'am, it's a kind of. Um, 
it's a kind it's of made from palm fruit yes one. yes yes so uh, this uh, palm even the coconut palm or any other date palms so such kind of uh, trees what they uh, early morning uh, I mean before uh, night itself uh, what they will uh, take a uh, extract I mean if you can uh, google and see the uh, they will uh, try to extract uh, take out the um, exudate from that particular especially this uh, palm trees when it is fresh they uh, they are going to use it as a drink in kannada um, it is called as uh, neera when it uh, whenever it is fresh uh, it is not fermented when it is fresh once it has been fermented once it has been fermented uh, for the process of fermentation they are going to use uh, yeast that is saccharomyces cerevisiae they are going to use then it is called as henda so this is one of a alcoholic uh, alcoholic beverage which is being extensively used where the palm trees the extract or the exudates of this palm trees has been used and uh, it has been used as a one of a drink when it is fresh alcohol content is very less and they tell it is very healthy so once it has been fermented it is made up of, i mean it consists of some amount of alcohol in it where they use saccharomyces cerevisiae for the process of fermentation so uh, there are certain uh, yeast like organisms which have been extensively used for the process of fermentation of idli dosa batters jalebi ganjis mochas and even this toddy so apart from these um, uh, the indian foods uh if we i mean uh, if you go to the other countries uh this fungi uh, uh, especially uh, in uh, indonesia geneva region new geneva region and all they are going to use uh, some food they it has been named as temp it's been named as temp where it is being made i mean the organism which is being used for the production of this temp is rhizopus oleosporus rhizopus oleosporus they are going to use this is this is how the temp is been prepared this is how it looks and this is the dish we like uh, they may use uh, uh, for the preparation of i mean they may deep fry and use any other some uh, dishes they are going to prepare so how this temp has been prepared as i had uh, told you the organism the fungi which has been used in the preparation of this temp is rhizopus oleosporus uh this particular temp as uh, because of uh, the usage of this rhizopus species it has got large amount of riboflavin between do b12 nicotic acid and also the enzymes like the lipase it has got proteases it has got some antibiotics is been produced by this rhizopus species which has been extensively uh, used and also because of this antibiotic it is uh, uh, positive uh, it is active against gram positive bacteria uh, so how they are going to prepare this uh, temp so basically the main substrate likewise uh, rhizopus cannot grow itself without any substrate right so what they are going to use as a substrate is soya beans i think you would have seen the soya beans soya beans is a substrate which they are going to give for this particular rhizopus to grow on that so what they will do first they take this rhizo i mean um, uh, soya beans soak it for some time in water and they will remove the hull that is the outermost covering is called as hull they are going to remove that hull part and they will boil it for 30 minutes 30 minutes they will boil so that this particular uh, soya bean become little soft uh, so that it is easy for this particular rhizopus while they why they are boiling so the, the hydrolysis happen whatever the uh, the carbohydrate proteins or whatever is present in this particular soya beans they get hydrolyzed so that it is easy for this rhizopus to utilize them so that is the reason they will soak and uh, remove the hull and uh, uh, they are going to boil it for 30 minutes and they will drain out the excess of water and they will dry that dry that particular uh, soya beans for some time after the process of drying they will inoculate rhizopus a rhizopus into these grains okay so later later they will wrap they will wrap in a plastic or banana leaf see in this particular image you can see they they have um, they have they will mix the soya beans along with some amount of inoculum of rhizopus oleosporus okay they will make one cake like structure they will make like that and they will just wrap 
why they are wrapping it for the process of proper incubation and all it requires uh, so that the contamination and all should not happen that is the reason they will clean this uh, the banana leaf or the plastic uh, whatever they are using they will clean it properly and they will wrap this particular soya beans which has been inoculated with uh, the rhizopus species and they will incubate for uh, one or two days one or two or three days rhizopus you know you would have also come across in our laboratory also so they grow vigorous vigorous they grow vigorous but here we should take care that sporulation should not happen so if you are going to leave it for longer time what will happen the sporulation may happen some people may be allergic to this particular spore so care should be taken that the sporulation should not be allowed proper uh, incubation temperature has to be provided temperature as you all know 25 to 30 degrees celsius is the apt temperature uh, for the growth of this particular most of the fungi and uh, incubate for one or two days so if you are going to leave it for longer time what happened the sporulation may happen it is of no use so that is the reason you incubate only for one or two days we know this particular rhizopus is a rapid grower it grows very vigorous and utilize the starch in the protein which is present in our soya bean and grow and become some cake like this so after two to three days you just open and you can cut like a bread is so how they you, you cut it and do it it has been marketed so this is called as temp where it has got a high uh, nutritive value so uh, our rhizopus soliosporus is one of a edible fungi likewise you might be very much familiar with our soya sauce isn't it soya sauce uh, where we are using in uh, various dishes nowadays, Chinese usually in uh, China, th this particular uh, uh, soya sauce they are using extensively for the preparation of Manchurians, for the preparation of fried rice, many other. Nowadays, even in our uh, Indian countries also, it has become very common. So for the production of this soya sauce, soya sauce, the basic ingredients, you know, Soya beans, as we all know, soya beans and wheat. Why we are using here wheat for the giving a substrate as starch uh, for the growth of uh, these organisms. So soya bean, rich in protein, wheat, rich in starch. So they are going to use these two. Soya beans, we are going to steam it, wheat, roast, crush it, mix both soya beans and wheat. And we are going to use the different organism. These organisms plays our fungi plays a major role in the production of this soya sauce, where we are going to use Aspergillus verizae, Saccharomyces roxy, Lactobacillus uh, species. Uh, uh, these are some of the bacteria, uh, lactobacillus, as well as the fungi, fungi especially, aspergillus and saccharomyces species has been extensively used, where they will break down these proteins or uh, uh, the starch or any other carbohydrate into the simpler form, simpler form, and uh, after mixing with the, the spores of these organisms, they are adding some amount of water along with little salt, they are mixing it properly, and we are going to to keep it for fermentation for the process of maturation once the fermentation has happened then they are going to filter it the fil after filtration um, the heat treatment especially pasteurization has been done after the pasteurization they are going to uh, see the qc quality control has been done and it it will be bottled and it is dispatched so here the purpose of saying the soya sauce is our organisms which are mainly involved in the production of the soya sauce or aspergillus or isis species and saccharomyces roxy these are the two different fungi apart from that lactobacillus diperchi these are some of the organisms which have been extensively used in the production of soya sauce. And apart from this, fungi are also extensively used in the preparation of a miso or soy sauce. What is the soya cheese? What is this soya cheese? This is one of uh, uh, the cheese which has been prepared by the process of the fermentation, fermentation of some starchy substance, say for example, uh, rice, cereals, soya beans, they are going to ferment and ferment it with the Aspergillus verizae, Saccharomyces roxy species has been used and from this the cheese has been obtained, that's called as miso. Likewise, we have sufu, sufu is one of a 
Chinese food, Chinese cheese, uh, which is being produced due to the, it, uh, the prepared using the fermented soya bean. Soya bean milk, they will prepare, they will extract milk from the soya beans. You know, soya beans has got large amount of fat. I mean, especially the protein content is very high. So they prepare, they will prepare the extract of the soya bean and they will allow some of the fungi to ferment this. The different fungi which has been extensively used in the process of fermentation is actinomucor elegans, actinomucor elegans, mucor hemilis, mucor subtilissimus. These are all these are uh, uh, the organism which belongs to the order mucorales of the uh, the class or the subdivision zygomycotina. Actinomucor elegans. Remember, students kindly remember all these names, all the scientific names or uh, the examples of this. Sufo. What is sufo? See, you can see in this particular image, it is a cheese. 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 You know, from milk we are going to prepare, but here in sufo they are using they are fermenting the milk of the soya beans with actinomucor elegans, mucor emulis, and uh, mucor subtilissimus. So these are some of the organisms which has been used for the process of fermentation for the production of a uh, fermented food called as sufu. And there is one more uh, uh, food product, fermented food product called as ragi. Ragi, R-A-G, small i. So it is one of a food uh, which has been extensively prepared in Indonesia. So here, uh, this see, this is this is what they are going to call as ragi. See here, this is nothing but a rice flour. See. This is rice flour. Inside this rice, rice flour, which is of around uh, three centimeters in its uh, diameter, small uh, round, uh, uh, like in Canada, we'll call it as wunde. Okay, like that kind, th three centimeter diameter. Inside this rice ball, there are certain fungi, which they are going to add. That's called as mucor, rhizopus, yeast, and bacteria. Consortium of these organism, which they are adding inside, inside this particular rice ball, rice ball like structure because this rhizopus, mucor, yeast and bacteria, they, these uh, group of organism, they are, uh, they, especially the mucor and rhizopus, they are extensively uh, used in the production of, uh, they are rich in vitamin B12 and also, uh, uh, and also this particular uh, ball like structure, they directly consume or they are going to use like a, for the process of saccharification of starch. See any fermented product if they have to prepare. Prepare. So what they will do, they will use this as an inoculum. They will add one, uh, one uh, small ball of this particular uh, uh, ragi so that if they are going to inoculate, into a um, uh, uh, into a, any starchy substance. So, for example, if they have to prepare some kanji, or if they have to prepare some drink, uh, which uh, which has been ex uh, which has been made from starch for the process of saccharification of the starch, this is been used as a inoculum. Okay, so you know immobilized enzyme, you know immobilization. So this is like immobilization. That is, they are going to trap this mucor, rhizopus, yeast, and bacteria in one rice floor. That is all. That is ragi. Okay, so likewise we have angkak. That is red rice. This is red rice. What is this red rice? This, as I was discussing in my uh, previous slides. Uh, uh, organism, say for example, Monoascus purpureus, I said, this is one of an organism which has an ability of producing a uh, substance statin called as lower statin. So here, yeah, what they are going to use, this is uh, very much, uh, and also this is one of an organism which produ produces a red pigment. Okay, so uh, uh, what they are going to, how they are going to prepare this red rice. So what they will do is, the, uh, this is a monoascus purpureus pure culture. So they are going to grow this monoascus purpureus on a surface of a rice. So like how it was temp, temp we grew rhizopus species on the surface of soya beans, isn't it? Likewise, this particular monoascus species is being grown on the rice. How they are growing, going to grow. The uh, rice, any rice, polished rice, is being soaked in water overnight. Overnight it has been soaked. Drain out excess of water. Autoclave, 
that is for the process of sterilization, just autoclave, cool that particular rice and inoculate with the suspension of this particular mold spore. Monoascus purpureus spores you can collect and inoculate into this particular rice, rice and incubate for some days, for three to five days. After the process of incubation, we can see the formation of this kind of rice where this particular fungi grows on each rice. You know, rice is made up of starch. Try to utilize this particular starch which is present in the rice grows and at the same time, it produces a secondary metabolite that is the red pigment also it produces and apart from that this particular rice uh, because of uh, the usage of this particular organism also has an ability of producing this lower statin. Lower statin is one of the substance which lowers the cholesterol in the human body. Hence this is called as red rice. So apart from that, apart from those molds, apart from yeast, there are also certain edible mushrooms, edible fungi, uh, uh, examples, agaricus, commonly called as button mushrooms. This you would have observed. There are also certain wild mushrooms, uh, for example, lentinus, lentin lentinula species, uh, auricularia species, auricularia. Uh, this is one of a uh, mushroom. Uh, it is commonly called as ear fungi, ear. It is like the uh, ears, our pinna. Uh, so it is called as ear fungi. This has been extensively uh, used in uh, northeastern countries, the I mean, northeastern uh, part of our India, especially in uh, Assam region, Manipuri region. In those region, it also grows. And also in those region, this particular auricularia, even in China, Japan, those region, this particular species has been extensively uh, produced wild. And also there are uh, lots of research is also happening in this particular field uh, where this particular auricularia species has been extensively um, uh, grown. They are trying to grow in vitro, but still the research should happen. Wolverilla species is there. Wolverilla white, this is also called as paddy straw mushroom. It commonly it is called as paddy straw mushroom because uh, the substrate which we are going to use for the growth of this particular mushroom is paddy straw. Hence it is paddy straw mushroom, Wolverilla volvesiae. Why it is Wolverilla? Because you can, can you see some cup-like structure at the base? This is called as Volva. Volva means something protective. Okay, so initially when this mushroom is very young and tiny, this Volva is protecting this pilus in type. Hence the name as it has got as Wolverilla. Likewise, we have Hypsizygous species. Hypsizygous uh, uh, calocybe in, in, in India, uh, it has been uh, marketed as uh, calocybe, calocybe, milky white mushroom, milky white. I don't know how much, how many of you would have heard about this particular milky white mushroom. Uh, most probably, uh, we are also looking for the collaboration with uh, some of the institutes so that we may arrange for some mushroom training courses also. Okay, I will let you know that students. And pleurota species, they should have uh, uh, seen oyster mushroom, oyster mushrooms, button mushrooms, milky white mushrooms. These are extensively used and rich in uh, uh, protein and it is equivalent to the meat. Those who are not uh, eating this non-vegetarian uh, food, uh, they may use this particular mushrooms has got a equal nutritive value as that of uh, the meat. However, but the protein content is very high and carbohydrate is less. So even the people with diabetes can go for this particular mushrooms. So likewise, we have a single celled protein uh, since it has been produced from uh, uh, myco, uh, from fungi and it is called as mycoprotein. These are some of the organisms which has been extensively used in the production of the single cell protein. Trichoderma viridae, Candida utilis, Candida lipolytica, Saccharomyces, Saccharomyces, Fibulages, Fusarium graminarum species. This would have studied in my previous classes. Cron. This is Fusarium. When I was teaching about Fusarium, I would have told this Fusarium graminarium species. This is how it has been marketed in. Um, the Western countries. So these are some of the single-celled proteins or the mycoproteins which can be extensively used. And also, you know, there are fungi are also used in the production of 
cheese in uh, uh, the milk dairy uh, industries we are going to uh, use the two different species of penicillium that is penicillium roqueforti penicillium camemberti which has been extensively used in the production of roquefort cheese camembert cheese this particular penicillium species give a particular flavor or I mean odor to that particular cheese so remember students very important for the point of your competitive examination penicillium roqueforti penicillium camemberti which has been extensively used in the production of cheese so likewise apart from food fungi are also used in controlling various pests as we had discussed in my previous classes also previous slides this fungi has an ability of controlling various pests say for example nematode nematodes uh, in the soil the soil can be i mean controlled so, uh, sh shall i uh, schedule one more class students yes ma'am okay ah, okay, okay yes ma'am